All right, some people were discussing the difficulty of disassembling an AR-15 without a buffer detent in place. I'm going to demonstrate that I can, in fact, do it with one hand because I know that the buffer detent is not in place. I can reassemble it with one hand. The reason the buffer detent is there is that it was designed for military use uh, for the lowest common denominator that isn't going to be expecting or paying attention to that or the potential for loss of the part in the field. Uh, I'm not really concerned about that. What I am concerned about is the potential failure of the buffer detent, which will cause it to fall down into the fire control, locking it up. The other benefit of not having it in there is that uh, you have constant positive forward pressure in the bolt carrier, uh, which depending on how your parts are made and tolerances are stacked, uh, can be a benefit not having it in there. So the buffer is always riding on the bolt carrier group. Yes, in theory, if everything's made correctly, when the bolt carrier comes in contact with the buffer, when the upper is closed onto the lower, it will not uh, allow the buffer to contact the buffer detent. However, that's not always the case. I've seen a couple dozen of these fail over the years in different environments, all different makes and manufacturers. If the buffer detent is poorly made, uh, it's cast or it's metal injection molded, it may be more prone to failure. So the simplest thing to do is just simply not have it in your gun and eliminate that fail point. And as you can see with my one-handed disassembly and reassembly, it's a non-issue.